Right now at 10, no body cam footage. We are learning more about the officers involved in the fatal shooting in Mountain Iron. Plus, bringing more testing to first responders, the increased effort on the Iron Range. But first, on the verge of approval, the latest on the COVID-19 vaccine process. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 10. Good evening, I'm Natalie Grant. Thanks for joining us. The first coronavirus vaccine in the U.S. is on the verge of being approved for emergency use. A group of experts endorsed the one made by Pfizer earlier today. All that remains is for the FDA to sign off on it. Skylar Henry reports from Silver Spring, Maryland. But also no data. An FDA uh, advisory yeah. panel voted so. Thursday to recommend an emergency use authorization for Pfizer's new coronavirus vaccine. So we do have a favorable vote. The final tally was 17 in favor, four opposed, and one abstaining. The FDA is expecting to follow the panel's guidance and has promised to act quickly. And it will trigger one of the biggest public health projects in U.S. history. Within 24 to 48 hours from that advisory committee decision, we will actually have shots in arms. Developing an effective vaccine in record time was a challenge. Delivering it may be an even bigger one. We know we're going to get enough for everyone, but obviously we won't have enough for everyone on the very first shipment. Pfizer is ramping up production to meet the demand for the vaccine. The federal government plans to supply it to states based on population. Hospitals and pharmacies are scrambling to prepare, installing special freezers needed to keep the medicine at 94 degrees below zero. The FDA's decision on the vaccine comes as the U.S. continues to set records in COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. Many experts have expressed hope that this will mark the beginning of the end of the pandemic. I cannot roll up my sleeve fast enough to get this vaccination. The FDA's vaccine panel will next weigh in on the one made by Moderna. It's also on track for public release by the end of the year. Now, two thirds of Thursday's no or two of Thursday's no votes rather were from panel members concerned about giving the vaccine to 16 and 17 year olds. The one, one told Washington Post that he would have enthusiastically voted yes if the authorization had been restricted up to those 18 and up. Meanwhile, Duluth area hospitals are ramping up for vaccine approval, but they're also feeling the strain from a large number of critical COVID cases in their ICUs. Both Duluth hospitals say that they are seeing their frontline clinical care staff work at unprecedented rates. Essentia is trying to ease the strain and compensate for staff getting sick or being unable to work. They have nearly 500 open positions to fill, especially for nurses. Are we doing okay? Yes, our nurses uh, and healthcare people in general are just really rallying. I mean, they are, I, it makes me so proud to work at Essentia, and I know the same thing at St. Luke's, is they're working overtime and they're working to care for you, and our beds are staffed, but we're just, we're concerned about the future. Now, for both Essentia and St. Luke's, they are gearing up to administer the vaccine to the public, healthcare workers, people at risk, and essential workers will be among the first to get vaccinated. Essentia reps say that anyone who wants the vaccine in the Northland should be able to get one by the fall of 2021. COVID-19 is causing major issues with maintaining fully staffed police and fire departments on the Iron Range. Many first responders have had to quarantine because they're being infected or have had to take time off of work to wait for results. Tonight, CBS 3's Leanne Valdez explains St. Louis County's new testing initiative to help fix the problem. There hasn't been a day in the past week where we haven't been in double-digit calls. First responders on the Iron Range are busy. A high number of those are either uh, COVID-positive calls or calls related to COVID-positive cases. It's not just the gear weighing heavy on their shoulders. And I have people that have been working 44 and 42 hours straight. The amount of work being piled onto staff is strenuous, says Virginia Fire Chief Alan Lewis, as they, among other departments, are dealing with staffing concerns. Limited personnel and you get one or two that are suspected, then they have to stay out until they get a confirmed negative or you've had a few that have actually been exposed and contracted, you know, the virus. This is why St. Louis County officials rolled out three different testing sites for public safety partners to use for free. We wanted to make sure that we did what we could to assure, a, a, you know, a 
a functioning workforce for public safety. Law enforcement, EMTs, firefighters, among others, will be able to get saliva testing for COVID-19 at three different locations, Virginia in Hibbing Courthouse and another in Hermantown. Chief Lewis says though the added workload hasn't caused the department to miss out on any 911 calls and his force gets tested regularly, this initiative will make a huge impact. This proactive testing helps us in that initial infectious period where we don't know that we're infected. And if we can catch that early in the first day or two, we could potentially prevent that from spreading to the entire department, spreading to other family members. Now, for those interested, we do have those testing sites hours listed on our website, cbs3duluth.com. Meanwhile, today marks the two-week mark since Thanksgiving, a key time frame when it comes to determining how much holiday gathering has played a role in the spread of COVID-19. St. Louis County has not seen the post-holiday spike experts were expect anticipating so far. In fact, daily case numbers in the county have dropped slightly since the end of November. Amy Westbrook, the St. Louis County Public Health Director, says around Thanksgiving, we were seeing daily case numbers around 200, but recently the county County is reporting about 100 new cases per day. Westbrook says that people tr did travel and socialize around the holiday, but maybe to a lesser extent due to the pleas to stay home or the governor's latest order. If we were to see um, Thanksgiving specifically impact our numbers, I think we would have started seeing that by now. If you know, maybe we could wait the next couple of days, um, but I think it's a good sign. Um, that we are not seeing an increase in numbers and we're actually seeing an, a decrease in numbers. Westbrook says that although we are not seeing a big spike, it's still important to avoid large social gatherings. That's where they're seeing the highest rate of transmission. Dave joins us now with a first look at that weather. You know, it was nice today, but it got kind of chilly when I was out there live at 5 and 6 o'clock. That wind kind of bit me a little bit when I was out there. Yeah, a little bit of a wind chill factor. Otherwise, temperatures both for the highs and the lows we're warmer than normal for at least one last time. I think temps will start to dip by tomorrow. Today, though, 43 was the high temp, 30 was the low, warmer than normal for both zones. Tomorrow, we'll get a little bit closer to the normal high within about 6 degrees rather than 20 or so. So things are going to change up. As far as snow goes, not much of a chance. Folks near the border got a little bit this morning. And folks in the UP could get a little bit tomorrow, but otherwise that bigger low to our west is going to the south and away from our area. So our Friday day planner says it'll be dry but partly sunny to mostly cloudy for most of the rest of us. Daytime start at 23, warmer than normal. Even the daytime finish of 30 is warmer than normal. But as the rest of the week comes across, temperatures will go back to normal. Will that help egg on any snow? I'll show you the seven day forecast and we'll check it out in just a few more minutes. All right, thanks Dave. There's still a lot of unanswered questions surrounding Saturday's deadly officer-involved shooting in Mountain Iron. There's no video evidence of the incident because deputies didn't have body cameras. With nationwide calls for police accountability, CBS 3's Kendall Jarbo explains why St. Louis County is waiting to buy body cams. Body cameras first caught St. Louis County Sheriff Ross Littman's attention two years ago. He says they have their benefits. I think the, the body cameras being deployed can improve. They clearly improve transparency by the work that our profession does and the work done by law enforcement officers. Littman didn't buy the body cameras. They came with a half million dollar price tag for setup alone. Littman expects a statewide body cam requirement in the future and hopes funding comes with it. And the hope that along with that requirement would come some funding so that the, the project costs would not be borne solely on the backs of St. Louis County taxpayers. Littman is also concerned with how the county will store video data and deliver it to the courts. A representative from the American Civil Liberties Union of Minnesota says people's privacy could be at risk. Body cams are sort of an interesting issue because they sort of live at this intersection of privacy rights and police accountability. We're okay with them, you know, and, and we support them if they're done right. Um, but of course, we also are concerned about um, sort of how, how they're implemented. Littman says body cameras can bring clarity, but don't always tell the whole story. The body camera, the video captured by it, is only one piece of any one incident. We have to, you know, take into account the entire incident, all evidence, all, all actions by everybody. And 
body camera doesn't always fulfill all of the, those roles. The county is weighing all of their options, balancing the need for privacy and police accountability. Now, regardless if funding comes, Littman says that his department will likely purchase body cams in the next few years. He also said another drawback to body cameras that it takes time to review it. Meanwhile, St. Louis County Attorney Mark Rubin agrees. He said in a statement, body cam footage can be very helpful, but does add significantly to the amount of time needed to review a case when there's footage from multiple officers. Still to come on live local CBS 3, it's the first day of Hanukkah, how those in the Twin Ports are celebrating. Two Harbors is pretty calm here at this time of the night. Most of the rest of the region is as well. Only a little bit of snow up north earlier this morning and maybe a little bit more for the UP tomorrow. And that's about it for snow chances now this week. That big storm system really fizzled for our area. We'll talk now instead about a temperature cool down coming our way. That's coming our way after the break. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS 3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS 3. Welcome to Medical Insight, a weekly healthcare feature brought to you by the experts at Essentia Health. Here's your host, Louis St. George. Today on Medical Insight, Dr. Mark Scott, a trauma surgeon at Essentia Health, talks about frostbite. If a person is wearing appropriate winter attire with gloves, boots, warm socks, long underwear, scarves, hats, things like that, the onset of frostbite can be greatly slowed, um, whereas a direct exposure of naked skin to the elements can produce frostbite injuries within minutes. If you or someone you know thinks that you may have experienced a frostbite injury, uh, getting prompt medical attention can mean the difference between uh, recovering from the injury, potentially with minimal long-term effects versus something as catastrophic as uh, losing fingers or toes or an entire hand or foot to amputation. At Essentia, one treatment for frostbite is a drug called Altaplace, which alleviates blood clots. Using Altaplace allows us to break down that clot and restore blood flow, uh, and uh, it's been shown to be very effective at uh, saving people's fingers or toes or even, even more major injuries uh, and avoiding the need for amputation. It's sort of paradoxical, but the times where we see, oftentimes see the most cases are actually at the beginning and end of the winter. When it's minus 30 outside, most people have the good sense to bundle up when they go outside. Wind can greatly accelerate the onset of frostbite. For Medical Insight, I'm Louis St. George. To learn more about this and other health topics, visit EssentiaHealth.org slash Medical Insight. It's the season for streaming and the perfect time to power up all your devices with extreme internet. Call today and save with prices as low as $19.99 a month for one year. Go dashing through your shows with amazing speeds from 60 meg up to 1 gig. Powerful in-home Wi-Fi and 99.99% network reliability. Enjoy the gift of high-speed entertainment for as low as $19.99 a month for one year. Dial 844-EXTREME2. Hurry, offer ends December 21st. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by Lulich Implement. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. All right. Our friends down at WCCO have caught on to the clear ice phenomenon that we've got going on in our northern lakes where we've got a fair amount of ice despite this warm spell, but no snow covering things up. So you can take a look down at the bottom and see big boulders and neat things like that. I think I'm going to get out this weekend and go check out some of our lakes up north and around my home country. Well, I do think temperatures now are going to be descending to help support more ice around our area. And I don't see any snow, frankly, coming now to cover it up, at least this week. We can always hope for next week, though, for snow fans. But for the short term, I don't think we're going to get any. Let's talk about high temperatures here today. We'll zoom in and take a look at what's going on as far as those high temps went. And they went from about 36 to even 47 degrees, 48 degrees around our area. Warmer than normal for all zones. Current conditions, it's not quite that warm right now, but still 32 is warmer than normal. 79% are 
relative humidity with a north-northwest wind 13 miles per hour and the air pressure readings on the high side at 30.07 inches of mercury. Frankly, it's staying up because the big low pressure system that uh, hinted earlier that it was going to hit us this weekend is not going to do so. Current temps, mid-30s for much of the upper peninsula, mid-30s as well for much of northwestern Wisconsin. And in Minnesota, the range is, as usual, just a little bit wider, going from 28 up the Gunflip Trail to as warm as 37 degrees on Park Point. Low temps tonight may start to cool at least a little bit inland northern Minnesota, drop into the teens. The rest of the area, though, still holding on to the 20s. As the warm spell well, holds on for another night before it slowly starts to fade away by tomorrow afternoon. Doppler map right now shows that that precip chance that paid off at least slightly up north, well, that's passing away as well, leaving our area skirting along the Canadian border and now going farther and into Ontario. Clouds, uh, they're trying to fill in with that bigger low pressure system that was trying to come our way, but really all it did was bring that little bit of precip this morning to the border country, and tomorrow could bring some flurries to the Upper Peninsula, 20% chance for that. Otherwise, the big low will move to the south of our area, and higher pressure will dry us up, if not completely clear us up, it's a weak high pressure cell, so it'll split the difference. I think we'll be partly sunny for many of the next five to seven days. Tonight in Minnesota, should be mostly cloudy with lows 17 to 29. Cooler inland, warmer by the lake. Northern Michigan and northern Wisconsin, 24 to 28. Mostly cloudy sky there as well. Tomorrow, sky conditions for Wisconsin, I think, will be partly sunny. And do keep in mind, we have that slight mixed chance, rain and snow for the Upper Peninsula highs. 31 to 35 for Minnesota high temps. They are 26 to 33 with a partly sunny sky. And yeah, we missed out on this low pressure system. Now it looks to be on the dry side from Saturday through Thursday. And temperatures start at 30 for a high on Friday, but fall down towards the lower 20s as we go towards midweek next week. All right. Thanks, Dave. Donated gingerbread houses are getting a fresh coat of candy decorations and coming together to form a holiday-themed walking tour. Two UMD art education students are working to create the first ever Duluth Gingerbread City walking tour. They collected donate, donated gingerbread houses and gave them lights and fresh decorations. Businesses in downtown Duluth will display the houses in their windows. The walking tour starts on Saturday and runs through January 2nd. You can see them at businesses on Superior. Street and First Street downtown. Meanwhile, today is the first day of the Jewish celebration of Hanukkah. Shabbat of Duluth lit the first candle of the six foot menorah in the Duluth Civic Center. The celebration moved outside and streamed online to prevent the spread of COVID 19. Rabbi Mendy Ross says that tonight's lighting is a message of hope during this difficult time. Chasing away darkness with a stick doesn't work, but spreading a little bit of light that will. Uh, that will illuminate that person's life and in turn illuminate it for others and pass it on and share, keep sharing the light. Last year the ceremony was at the mall with a lot of people in attendance. Rabbi Ross says that he's looking forward to seeing a big crowd again next year. Still to come on live local CBS3, COVID-19 has put a immense pressure on those in the hospitality business. Why they're calling for aid coming up next. CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. Being overweight may lead to high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, a weakened immune system, and can make COVID-19 even more risky. At Healthy Systems USA, get your free weight loss consultation from the comfort of your own home. Call or go to HealthySystemsUSA.com. Hurry into Fleet Farm to get the best deals of the week. Save big on things like Fleet Farm pistachios. A one-pound bag, $5.99. Pennzoil Full Synthetic Motor Oil. Five quarts, only $9.99 after rebate. And Wild Delight Nut and Berry Wild Bird Food. A 20-pound bag, $17.99. Plus, buy a $100 Fleet Farm gift card and get a $10 Fleet Farm gift card for free. Gifting just got easier. Fleet Farm, we've got you covered. Okay, Mr. Medicare figure-outer, one last question. What's the cost? For many, Part A is free. Cost goes up the more parts you add. But UCARE has Medicare Advantage plans that come with everything you need. Sounds good. And so does your bike. Now. Yeah, thanks to you, she's purring like a kitten on a bed of yarn. Well, that's a new one. Yeah, I just made it up. 
You can steal it for your bike shop. Yeah. No, I'm good. The holiday season is truly the most magical time of the year. It's the perfect time to appreciate Duluth's beautiful downtown waterfront district. Everything is a little different this year, but it has never been more important to support the local businesses you know and cherish. Enjoy the sights, safely browse local shops, and bring home tasty treats. This year, your gathering will be smaller and your visit shorter, but your loyalty and commitment make a big impact. The Greater Downtown Council invites you to celebrate the season. Is your child on track? As a caregiver, we love watching babies reach milestones, like that first smile, that first giggle, first steps and words. Some children need a little extra help to learn and grow. If you've noticed that your child isn't reaching certain milestones, don't worry. Free help is available for children ages birth to five. Whether your child is at home, in daycare, or in preschool, the Help Me Grow referral system connects you to the early intervention program in your area. Visit HelpMeGrowMN.org or your local school district to make sure your child is on track. For coverage that matters most to you, tune to CBS3. Being overweight may lead to high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, a weakened immune system, and can make COVID-19 even more risky. At Healthy Systems USA, get your free weight loss consultation from the comfort of your own home. Call or go to HealthySystemsUSA.com. Dominate any terrain on a Polaris snowmobile from Duluth Lawn and Sport. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's check in with meteorologist Caitlin Moffitt this morning. And the below average trend Thanks does so much for joining us. So wake up with us starting at 5 a.m. Watch Caitlin and Jenna in the morning at 5 and 6 a.m. on CBS3. Live, local, CBS3. Restaurant, hotel, and tourism workers are begging state and federal lawmakers for help. Hospitality Minnesota estimates, estimates as many as 150,000 jobs have been lost since the pandemic hit in the state in March. Now, workers in that hard-hit industry are out with a new video and a dire warning. Without help, more businesses will shutter and more Minnesotans will face heartache. Here's Esme Murphy. My grandparents the video my features grandparents emotional appeals, including from star restaurateur and chef J.D. Fratsky, who's now unemployed. Please, the time to act is now. Hospitality professionals are proud, independent, and entrepreneurial. We would not be asking for assistance unless this was a time of true desperation. WCCO's Jason DeRussia profiled Fratsky in 2017 at St. Paul's Red River Kitchen. Fratsky is now warning of what lies ahead without help. It opens us up to darkness. The negative impact of the recent shutdowns on the mental health of my Minnesota hospitality family members is spreading faster than the coronavirus that caused it. The video also warns of more closings. The downtown Minneapolis Hilton used to employ 500 people. We are down to about 45 employees at this point, and we're talking about um, suspending operations moving forward. Grandma's restaurant in Duluth has also laid off hundreds. If we do not receive aid, I fear that the job and tax losses would be permanent. Duluth would never be the same. Currently, state legislators are negotiating a relief package for restaurants that includes direct grants, tax and license fee relief, and extended unemployment benefits. Minnesota legislators say they could vote on a relief bill as soon as Monday in a special legislative session, but that right now they don't have a deal. And that's also the case in federal negotiations for a slimmed down federal relief package, which leaves hospitality workers right where they are now begging for help. Now, at that special session, Governor Tim Walz will also seek to extend his peacetime emergency for another 30 days. Coming up in sports, UMD facing number one ranked North Dakota. Kelly is in with the highlights. Coming up next. Watch Jeopardy at 4.30, followed by CBS3 Live at 5 on Live Local CBS3. Snow piles up quickly. Remove it just as quickly with Kubota equipment. Featuring front and rear mount snow blowers, blades, and rotary sweepers, it's everything you need to take on winter. Get select Kubota equipment for zero down and 0% APR for up to 60 months. See your local Kubota dealer today. No one serves you better than Lula Chipperman. Make it the best holiday ever with the true love guarantee at Numi Jewelers. Dazzle her with a gift she's guaranteed to love. 
We're so sure she'll love the piece you choose that we'll even exchange it if she doesn't. True love is guaranteed at Numi Jewelers. I'm Steve Little with Bath Planet. Safety is our top priority, so our workers are following all CDC guidelines to ensure the safety of both our customers and employees. Get your dream bathroom for zero down, zero interest, and zero payments till 2022. All of our products are backed by the Good Housekeeping Seal of Approval and come with a lifetime warranty. For a free estimate, call us today or go online to book your appointment. Bath Planet, out of this world service, down to earth price. Happy birthday! Andalus Casino wants to celebrate your birthday with you all month long. Every day during your birthday month, you can receive up to $30 in club cash as a special birthday bonus. Did you say every day? Yes, every day of your birthday month. Stop by the Players Club or log on to FondaliceCasino.com for all the participation details. We're celebrating your birthday all month long, so you can have a great time out at Fondaloo. Update the flooring in your home today with help from Menards. We carry a great selection of flooring options in stock, including Manor Hill Vinyl Plank Flooring from Shaw. It's waterproof, features an attached pad, and clicks together for an easy installation. It's durable, making it perfect for any room in your home. Right now, pick it up for only $2.49 per square foot. Plus, a Menards gift card is always a great gift idea. Four seasons greetings to you all from Menards. Somewhere along the way, the story got turned around. Maybe because you didn't want the responsibility. But we need to be really clear about this. We are not the front line. You are. We are your last chance. CBS Believe This Morning updates from Duluth city officials about the city's COVID-19 response efforts. And a cool down arrives. I'll have a look at your weekend forecast. So wake up with us starting at 5 a.m. A killer offense, a guy with five goals, a few things to clean up defensively after Tuesday night's matchup against Miami. But tonight was a game that the Bulldog country had certainly been looking forward to. Number one versus number three, North Dakota and the UMD Bulldogs. The lamp is lit first by a guy who hasn't seen a score since his freshman year in a Bulldog sweater. Hermantown's Jesse Jocks puts one home seven minutes into the first to make it one nothing. UMD. 7.52 remaining in the second. North Dakota evens the score. Reese Gaber with a beauty of a shot right past Ryan Fanti. They did add another from Shane Pinto to take the lead. In the third, clock ticking down, in comes to save this one is another Hermantown guy. This time it's Cole Kepke, and we are tied at two and heading into overtime after a 2-2 tie. It's end of regulation, and after two scoreless overtimes, we go to a shootout. So it'll end in a tie, but it's for an extra NCHC point. And UMD goes 0-2 on the shootout till Nick Sweeney goes top shelf. North Dakota gets a chance to save this one, but Ryan Fanti, the great wall of the Bulldogs, stops Shane Pinto short of a goal. UMD grabs that extra point. Technically, technically not really. Still undefeated. They get two days off and will face Denver on Sunday. And as a reminder, almost all of UMD's games from the pod you can catch on my nine, believe it or not. Only a couple to go. And they return home afterwards to home sweet Amsoil Arena. The regular season is slated to begin following the pod in teams' respective home arenas on January 1st. The full list of games being broadcast on My9 as well as the entire hockey schedule is subject to change. And you can head to CBS3Duluth.com and click on the Sports tab for a full lineup. And there may not be fans in the stands down in Omaha, but Bulldog Country is still making an impact by showing their support for the team. Over the past week, the team has received over hundreds of letters, notes, calls, and emails wishing the team well the rest of their way in the pod. Today, the team finally had an opportunity to read and see some of those well wishes as they were posted in a team meeting space. Athletic Director Josh Berlo says the support has been overwhelming and appreciated by the entire team. One of the really powerful things that came out to me is as I'm reading all of these, um, 
Thank you for playing. We needed something to help us through these tough times. Thank you for giving us a sense of normalcy. Thanking our program and our team for working hard and staying healthy and giving them an escape from what we all know is a super challenging world and COVID's touched so many families in a lot of different ways. So uh, it meant a lot for our guys to know that they're, uh, they're appreciated, they're supported, and they're helping people get through some tough times. Meanwhile, the winter sports season rolls on for prep basketball teams over in Wisconsin. Tonight was the home opener for the Northwestern boys basketball team. Tigers in search of their first win as they hosted Spooner. Pick it up in the first half. Northwestern pushing it up the floor as Harrison Nelson receives the pass. Drives all the way in for the layup. Tigers with a early five-point lead. Later on, Spooner battling back. Initial shot off the inbound is no good. Eventually, Andrew Nazert is there on the rebound, puts it right back up for two, making it a one-point game. But the Tigers would maintain their lead, then give him all three. Jace Nelson from the corner knocks down the triple. Tigers pick up their first win, no problem. 74 to 43, the final showing. You can even play basketball in masks, folks, so wear one. That's going to do it for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Change the future of medicine from the convenience of home. Join the All of Us Research Program to help improve health research and speed up medical breakthroughs. Visit EssentiaHealth.org slash all of us to learn more. For months, we've all done our best to stay safe. But to remain safe in the long run, it's up to us all to take actions that don't just slow the spread of COVID, but collectively overcome it. Like getting a test if you have any symptoms. Answering if your health department calls and wearing a mask in public spaces. We all want to regain what we love in life. To get there, we all need to go forward and do our part. The historic gateway to Duluth, the St. Louis County Depot, is now the heart and soul of arts, culture, and history in our region. And now more than ever, we need the joy found through the arts, the graceful beauty of dance, drama, and excitement, the works of artists and artisans, our long and proud history preserved, and music to inspire. The Depot United campaign raises funds for all the organizations at the Depot. We need your support now more than ever. Donate through the mail or go online. Arts, culture, and history need you. Mariah Haberman here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and discoverwisconsin.com. Plus, subscribe to The Cabin Podcast, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. ready always there visit nationalguard.com to find out more every second of every day it happens something big something worth talking about news happens and you can't wait for it you need to be constantly digging asking hunting wanting more more truth more real answers more who what where when and why and it's about you it's about now it's about wherever whenever at Live Local CBS 3, it's about the news, your neighborhood news. Men's Wardrobe by Mainstream Fashions for Men. The annual gift giver sale is going on now through December 31st. Mainstream, downtown Duluth. Well, before we go, scotch may be getting a little bit cheaper, but you'll have to wait until next year to find out. Spirits and wines from four European countries got more expensive last year when the Trump administration slapped tariffs on them. The U.K. was one of those countries. It was because of an aerospace trade dispute with, a, with the European Union, but British officials say that they plan to end tariffs on some on some U.S. goods when the U.K. leaves the E.U. That would give them leverage to ask the U.S. to ditch the tariffs as well, and that could mean lower prices on scotch whiskey as well as British wine. Some good news for those scotch and wine drinkers out there, Dave. 
Yeah, I guess so. A complicated business, all these tariffs and international trade. I know, I know. Last look at the forecast here before we yeah, go? Yeah, that's a little bit complicated as well because <laughs> that big low pressure system that we thought was going to really hit us this weekend is not even going to barely tickle us. Some towns got a little snow this morning. The UP could get a touch tomorrow. After that, it semi-dries up. Well, actually, it will dry up and semi-clears up from Saturday through Thursday, and it also cools down a little bit. If we hit 40 today, it goes down from there. All right. Thanks, Dave. Well, that's your CBS 3 News at 10. Have a good night.